this build that I've got underway, I have a little predicament with my receiver antenna. I like to use these uh, cable ties uh, to support the receiver antenna wires. I'll put heat shrink around the, around the two of them together. Uh, but uh, this antenna wire needs to be the similar length to the, uh, to the cable tie. So I've had to poke a fair amount of the receiver cable, antenna cable, through to the underside of the frame on both sides. And what I risk here is that at some point it's going to get mangled up in the in the prop. Uh, I also I could choose to try and cable tie it out of the way underneath, but I think that'll get messy. So I'm going to show you a way of uh, of shortening these uh, antenna leads, and uh, the same process would apply if you need to repair one. Let's start by taking a look at the anatomy of the cable we're dealing with. There are four parts to it, an inner central core that's wrapped in insulation, clear in this case, then wrapped in a, a silver mesh braid, uh, followed by an outer uh, plastic insulation. Pull those out and uh, you can now see how much longer they are than the, uh, than the cable tie. So without further ado, a sharp pair of side cutters. It's going to chop it the same length as the cable tie. And the same on the other side. Okay, so I've effectively chopped uh, these ends off. Now, I'm just going to take a, a ruler now and I'm going to show you something. This should measure about 32 millimetres. 32 point something millimetres and uh, it does. It's a, actually these are a little bit longer on this, uh, on these Tyrannus X4R ones. My Spectrum ones were always about 32. These are about 33 millimeters. So, so remembering my length of 33 millimeters, I'm going to go one millimeter longer, and uh, it makes sense at the end. So I go to just measure off 34 millimeters in my fingernail there. I'm going to carefully run my knife just around the plastic here of the sheath just until I feel the inner part, the wire underneath or the... Now I can sort of bend that a bit and I don't know if you can see that I've exposed the, uh, the inner is now just to peel that out of the way. So I'll just peel the plastic sheath off and I'm left with uh, with this. Now, next step is to cut this off. So, it's just a uh, a wire mesh weave around the around the inner core. So I'm just going to push it back down to the bottom there. Now at this point, this is where I like to take my very very small side cutters, and after sort of ballooning it at the end there, take the side cutters. And all I'm doing is cutting through the outer cable. Now remember, this is conductive, so the last thing you want is this falling down onto your flight controller or something else. So be aware of where the little bits and pieces end up. And uh, once that's out of the way, so that's, a, that's just the, the sheath around it. 34 millimeters. So here's where I just cut off my last little millimeter and cut it back to 33. So I always just go that little one millimetre more or so and that way if you go under it it's not such a painful exercise to try and peel a millimetre off. So that side's done. Now I'll do the same on the other side. So if you've if you've managed to get one of these antennas caught in the prop and uh, you've damaged it, maybe you've cut this whole piece off, the same principle applies. So just note how much you need to uh, need to expose. As I said, it's normally 32 to 33 millimetres. Uh, just to show you, this is the outer sheath that slides back. And by pushing it back down, you get a little balloon effect at the bottom there. Let's get these cutters and just carefully cut it without cutting through the inner, the inner piece. and then remove it. The 
Yeah, 33 millimetres exactly. So my antennas are now prepared, they're the right length, they've got the right amount exposed. Now I need to bend my cable ties with a 90 degree angle in them so I get proper diversity. And uh, the way I'll do that is I'll take a mental note of where I want the bend to be, about here. I'll take a, this one's a gas version, my electric one's not working. I'll remind myself where I need it. And just below where the exposed bit is, I'm just going to gently heat that up. Now if you heat it up too quickly, too much, it'll bubble and you'll end up with it becoming very brittle and it will, uh, it'll bend the first time, sorry, it'll break the first time it bends. So if you heat it up slowly, it still remains uh, um, a little bit more ductile. So that's the first one done. Now the other side, basically just match this side. And there we go. So a little bit more than 90, but by the time I put the heat shrink on, it'll pull back up a little bit. So now I've got my heat shrink ready. This uh, just 2.5 millimeter works well with this size cable tie. And uh, pull up my antenna to the top. Clear will also help me identify if a propeller cuts through I can sort of better see if there's any any damage to the antenna. Now I like to make sure the antenna sits on the let's say the inside of the cable tie not on the outside because if this drops down into the prop there's a uh, less chance that it will get damaged. The, I don't care if the cable tie gets cut it's easy to replace Okay, now from what I understand, it's very important that that exposed 32 or 33 millimeter piece is straight. We don't want it going around the bend uh, in the, the cable tie here. So the bend is just below where that is. I hope you can see that. And uh, it's important that this bit is left is straight and that it's at 90 degrees to the other side and that gives proper diversity. There we have it. Help these from pulling out easily. Another piece of larger heat shrink. That might actually work better in this case. There we go, perfect. I've still got a, not quite 90 degrees, but it's close enough. So I've still got my, my diversity there. And uh, that little bit of heat shrink in there helps ensure that these don't, don't uh, easily fall over into the props. And uh, the antennas are on the inside of the cable tie, so they're protected there as well. And uh, the job is done. Now, I have them sticking up about that high for good reason. Because a battery is a good blocker for RF frequency. So I sort of need them to be pretty much above the, the top of the battery there. Uh, to work properly. If they, if you hide the battery or if you hide these inside of carbon fibre, uh, carbon fibre also blocks RF uh, signals. Uh, they won't uh, do their job. So there you have it. Let's just have a look at the reason why the antennas are at the back of the quad. If the quad was flying level like this, maybe it was a DJI Phantom, it probably wouldn't matter too much where the antenna was positioned. But with these racing quads with a carbon fibre frame that's uh, effectively an RF blocker as well as a battery fitted on there, having the antennas at the back allows for our typical flight motion which is pitched forward like this. If you notice the antennas are still sticking up higher than the frame. So if I was sitting behind the quad, I still have a direct line of sight to the antennas. Now if the antenna was fitted at the front where my thumb is on the left, as I pitch around, pitch forward, the antenna would now be hidden behind the frame. So it is important that the antennas, both for video transmitter and the receiver, are fitted at the back of the quad for that reason.